Today we're going to be looking at six reasons why Grand Theft Auto 4 is better than Grand Theft Auto 5. Now, I want this to try and be as civil as possible because I think both of these games are absolute masterpieces. I think that GTA 5 is incredible in its own rights, and I think that Grand Theft Auto 4 is amazing in its own rights as well. But there's just a handful of things about GTA 4 that I think Rockstar did way better and executed 100% better than what they did in GTA 5. Now, if you guys have your own things that you think Grand Theft Auto 4 did better, if you played it, I know not everyone got to play GTA 4. They might have skipped it. They might not have been old enough. They might not have been interested in Grand Theft Auto back then. But if you are, let us know your thoughts, opinions, and more in the comments down below as well. All right, the first thing today, and I think this is probably one of the bigger things we're going to mention, that is single-player DLC or story mode expansions. Grand Theft Auto 4 had two of the best paid DLCs of any video game out there. Yes, you had to pay for them, but they were absolutely incredible. The first expansion, which is The Lost and the Damned, was released on February 17th, 2019, and it followed the protagonist Johnny Klebitz, a member of the Liberty City Biker Gang, and it was all about his journey through Liberty City uh, trying to get his biker gang back to its former glory. Now, what was great about this and what's great about the second DLC pack, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, Johnny Klebitz was a main feature of the single player expansion, the main one, and you just kind of like picked up his story along the way, which was so great. The second expansion was The Ballad of Gay Tony, which was released a couple months later on October 29th, 2009. And this featured Luis Lopez, who was an assistant nightclub owner to Tony Prince. And it follows him as he revolves conflicts of friends, family, and work. So these updates came out about a year after the original game came out. And they connected the story all together of the missing diamonds, of sort of things you didn't get to see from the main campaign featuring Nico Bellic. And that's one of the things missing in Grand Theft Auto V. We have the main storyline, but there's so much more. Either to go back in time, to go forward in time or play alongside the same timeline in the present, but maybe from the perspective of a different character, like Lamar or someone like that. That would have been incredibly cool. Now, the reason for likely no single-player expansion probably has something to do with the success of Grand Theft Auto Online, but regardless, it was still a shame that we never got to see the fantastic story of GTA V get continued in one way, shape, or form. I'm still holding out hope that something will happen, but for now... Grand Theft Auto 4's story expansions are far supreme to GTA 5 because there are none. The number two spot, this is also a big one, interiors. So if you guys have never played Grand Theft Auto 4, basically every building had some sort of interior that you could go into. Whether it was a car dealership that you could go inside and steal a supercar from the top floor. Whether it was an internet cafe that you could go on the computer and send a message to someone you wanted to go on a date on. Whether it was just a simple coffee shop or a burger place to get a bite to eat, you could go inside. And that is extremely missing from GTA 5, where almost none of the buildings that are present you can go inside. And the ones you can are specifically meant for story mode missions only or cutscenes. Now, why is this important? Well, it makes the world feel way more deep. So GTA 5's problem is a lot of the buildings, even though it's so big, are completely hollow, meaning you can't go inside and you can't do anything. Whereas in Grand Theft Auto 4, it's almost like going inside a place opened up an entire different world with new interactions, new things you could do, consequences to your actions of what you did in there. So having interiors that you could go inside, that you could explore, was a huge plus for me. And the fact that we never got to see that in GTA 5 is such a bummer because there's a ton of amazing interiors, Bahama Mama's nightclub, Life Invader office that are there, Rockstar just don't utilize them in free mode, which is very, very unfortunate. At the number three spot today, interacting with the world. So this is one of my favorite features of GTA 4, albeit a pretty small one, is how well Nico Bellic, Johnny Klebitz, and Luis Lopez could interact with the world. So whether it's picking up an object off of the road and throwing it at a pedestrian, or whether it's picking up a brick from a local pile of garbage and throwing it through a window in a shop, that's the sort of thing I'm talking about, being able to interact with the world. And this sort of goes hand in hand with the lack of interiors with GTA 5. 
The world itself almost seems like it's allergic to you and your character. Like you really can't do anything with your character to make them interact with the world, where in GTA 4 you could. And that is so awesome. And this has a lot of things to do with mini games, like whether it's going to a bar and just picking up a game of pool, something you can't do in Grand Theft Auto V, whether it's, like I said, interacting with the world, picking things up, using things like lifts to get you to the top of buildings. We don't get to do really anything like that in GTA V. So it made the world feel way more alive, realistic, and interactive. And it was one of my favorite parts about GTA 4, and it's one of those small things that on the surface you might not notice, but definitely at a second glance, it's something that is massively missing uh, in GTA 5. The number four spot, police officers. So the cops, and I've been saying this for a while now, in GTA 5 are ridiculous. I don't know how Rockstar messed this up so much, but they don't act like normal police officers. Uh, number one, they are essentially terminators. So they have so much health, it seems. They lock onto you instantly. They are so quick to kill you if you are in an encounter with them. Uh, and that's just the first part. The second part is they don't act like normal police. So in GTA 5, if you just like stand next to a police officer, they'll eventually like start shooting you just for standing there. In GTA 4, they reacted much more like a normal cop. Like, if you push them, you know, they would give you a pushback and tell you to get out of here. They wouldn't immediately shoot you in the face. Likewise, in Grand Theft Auto 4, when you got cops on you, it was a lot easier to get rid of them. And they also reacted a little bit more normally. Like, if you brushed their car in traffic, they wouldn't immediately start shooting after you. They would chase you. You could get rid of them. Where in Grand Theft Auto 5, it seems like the slightest malfeasance by yourself is going to end up getting yourself killed. Like, even if it's not your fault, if the cops run into you, they'll end up going after you. So this is something that is just way too unrealistic, in my opinion, that the cops seem to be everywhere, have this incredible ability to dispose of you, and just don't seem realistic at all. And it really does hinder the game, in my opinion. The number five spot today, NPCs and pedestrians. This is sort of building off of the cops, but the NPCs and pedestrians in GTA 4 seem to interact with you way more realistically than they do in GTA 5. So, for example, if you bump into a pedestrian uh, on the street, they might get knocked over and then they instantly want to fight you. If you do the same thing in GTA 5, you bump them over and knock them over, they're going to die or they're going to just run away, which is quite strange. Similarly, if you, for whatever reason, shoot a pedestrian in the arm or the leg, they're going to act like they got shot in the arm or the leg. They're going to limp away or they're going to walk away holding their shoulder. If you do that in GTA 5, they're just going to hit the ground and die. That's it. So that's another thing that really is important, NPCs, because they're the ones that interact with you. And in GTA 5, they almost feel like robots. They don't react realistically to realistic situations, which is, again, something I absolutely loved about Grand Theft Auto 4 and something I think is desperately missing from GTA 5. And at the number six spot today, car physics. So I think a lot of people are going to like the more cartoonish feel of the vehicles in GTA 5. In GTA 4, number one, driving was much more realistic. It was harder to drive. You had to be a little bit more careful. Uh, number two on building off that is car damage. So I loved the way that cars reacted to the world in GTA 4. Like if you ran into a sign or you hit it on the corner of a building, only that corner of the car would be broken and dented. If you shot the tires, you would hear the hissing of the air coming out of them. Where in Grand Theft Auto 4, the deformation of cars seems to be just random, almost by default. Uh, it, it, there's really weird scuffs and scratches that you get on the car. Not to mention how your character reacts with the car as well, getting flown out of the vehicle in GTA 4. I feel like happens a lot more often in GTA 5, especially when you have those high-speed crashes. So it's just the way the car reacts to the world and how a little bit it was a little bit more difficult to drive your vehicle in that game. Now, as I mentioned earlier, some people might not like that. Some people might like the little bit easier cartoony style, but it was definitely much more rewarding to drive in Grand Theft Auto 4 than it is in GTA 5, and that's something I really enjoyed. But anyways, that right there is six reasons why Grand Theft Auto 4 is better than GTA 5, in my opinion. Like I said, hopefully we can keep this civil in the comments down below, but I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you've played GTA 4, 
and Grand Theft Auto 5. Let me know why you think GTA 4 is better than GTA 5, or why do you think the opposite? Why is GTA 5 better than GTA 4 and why I'm wrong? Let me know your thoughts, opinions, more in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily GTA 5 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.